Even though it's only been about a year since ChatGPT was unveiled to the public, AI has permeated pretty much every aspect of our lives. It has been useful in so many different ways than people could have even dreamed of, but it's also become quite a headache in the education space. It seems like people are on either side of the fence when it comes to AI. Either they're all in and super excited about using it in their teaching in their classrooms, or they're assembling teams to try to find out ways to battle this technology in education. If you've watched some of my previous videos, then you know that I absolutely love AI and specifically things like ChatGPT. But I do acknowledge that students aren't using it effectively and are frankly being pretty lazy about it. They're just asking AI to write their assignments for them and just pass it off as their own, which, ew. So in this episode, I'm discussing five hacks that will make it harder for your students to cheat in the age of AI. Stay until the end because I have a bonus tip that's gonna work for a lot of you and you don't wanna miss out. If helpful tips like this are exactly what you're looking for, then be sure to hit that like and subscribe button so that you won't miss any future content. The first step to making your assignments more cheat-proof is to get a baseline of your students' work. I would suggest that you do some kind of paper and pencil assignment to make sure that it's authentic, and I would make it really low stakes. In fact, I wouldn't even grade this initial assignment. It would be more along the lines of, show me what your teacher taught you last year, show me what you know in my particular subject, and just make it so that the students don't necessarily feel compelled to cheat in any way, and they don't freeze, and they'll actually show you what it is that they can do. You could even make it a group assignment if that makes it easier for the students, but I would suggest giving them some easier material, something that they should have already learned by the time that they've got to you, and then have them work through that and write out their answers, whether it's math or science or any subject, just basically what is it that they're coming to you with and so that they can give you authentic work. And if you teach a subject where students are going to have to cite sources or anything like that, go ahead and ask them to do that as well. Now, one of the reasons why I like to do this is because the different programs that use AI like ChatGPT or BARD, they have their own voice. They have a particular syntax and cadence that after a while of using them, you kind of get used to the way that it sounds. So having a baseline of how they actually write or how they actually work, their thought process, you can compare something that they turned in that maybe doesn't seem like it's really theirs. You can compare it to the baseline and that can be further proof that they probably cheated on it. It's actually pretty interesting to see how each AI functions. For example, with ChatGPT, when you ask them a question, they will repeat the question with the, in the introductory sentence and then they'll give you the answer and then they'll have a conclusion. And a lot of times Google Bard, they like to give you things in bullet points and they also kind of summarize what you just said and they don't necessarily provide you with as much of a conclusion, but just the way, it's kind of like having a conversation with different people. You can just kind of tell, or even like if you text someone, you can tell just by the way that they text who they are. So next, you're definitely gonna have to tweak some of your assignments and create more specifications and requirements. So this is really important because the AI isn't capable of fulfilling all of the requirements for your assignment, especially if you're picky. So what this could look like is requiring a certain format for your submission. For example, my PLC, we teach seventh grade English, we require what we call the race paragraph format. And so race is R for restate, A is answer, C is cite, and E is explain. Although it's more like racists because I do cite and explain twice, plus I require a summarizing sentence. So if a student goes into chat GPT or BARD and asks it to write a race paragraph about a particular subject, most of the time when those paragraphs come back, it's not in the proper format. It doesn't fulfill my particular requirements. For example, when they cite their evidence, for me, they have to use direct quotes. Also for their explanations, they need two sentences and those sentences cannot paraphrase or summarize the quotes. Sometimes I even require that they use certain transition words or certain phrases. And so the more specific that you can be in terms of your requirements and what you put on the rubric, the harder it is for them to use AI to cheat. For math, you could do something like require that they divide their work up into certain sections, they number or label each step, 
Maybe they have a more metacognitive area where they have to write out their thinking process on that. And it has to be like on a certain area of the page. It just makes it a little bit harder for them to do copy and pasting. And I would definitely deduct points from any deviation from your format so that students learn that they have to do it precisely and in this way. And they're going to find that it's actually more work for them to use AI to help them with the assignment than to just figure it out on their own. It's gotten to the point where when I'm using AI to create multiple choice quizzes, it can't even give me the exact format that I need in order to import it into my learning management system. And so I still have to go in and tweak some things. It's also given me incorrect multiple choice answers when I've asked it about a particular story. And so you still have to go back and check your work to make sure that the AI is correct. And I've had even students submit assignments using AI, the quotes that they use in there didn't even exist in the story. And so everyone pretty much has to be careful when they're using it because AI isn't foolproof. Something that I would also consider is your revision, redo, retake policy. Now there's going to be a subset of kids who are going to cheat regardless of what your policy is because they just don't want to do the work. They're just lazy. They don't want to do the work, but at the same time, they don't want to be hassled by their parents because they have an F in your class. So they're going to use AI to cheat. But then there's also those students who, because they want to go to like a higher level college or university and grades really matter for them because of that, they are cheating so that they don't get a bad grade in your class. And so sometimes if you have a really strict policy where you don't allow revisions or any kind of retakes, you're more likely to get students who are going to cheat. The next thing that you can do that will definitely thwart any attempts to just copy and paste from AI is to require sources and proof. So what this would look like for a writing assignment is you would require sources and citations for the assignments. And I know it doesn't apply to every situation, but if you can make it apply to writing assignments specifically, you're gonna find that students are gonna be less likely to cheat if you do this. So one thing that you could do is create a minimum number of citations, say five to 10 per assignment. And then I would ask students for screenshots of the sources. So let's say that they had to read a nonfiction article and then they had to do some kind of write-up about it and they would have to include a quote from the article. What I would want them to do is not only quote it, but also screenshot it. That way you know for sure that they know where that quote is in the article and that they didn't just pull it from AI. And then if you do allow them to paraphrase the evidence, they still need to include a screenshot of the actual quote. And here's why. I took a class for my own professional development and I decided that I was gonna see if I could use AI to help me with my assignments and what that would look like and what would happen, because honestly, I was just curious. Not that I needed the help because I am an English teacher, but I just wanted to see what it could do. I have to tell you that in many ways, it kind of sucked. So something that I tried doing was copying a chapter from the textbook and pasting it into the AI and then asking it to pull quotes to support a certain claim. Now, something that I like to do is to double check and find where that quote is in the text. And I would go back and I couldn't find that quote in the text. I would do a control F and search specific words in the quote that it gave me and it didn't exist. So then I thought, well, maybe just paraphrase it for me. So then I still had to dig through the chapter to find that particular quote that it was pulling from. And it was just the same amount of work as if I had just done it myself. If anything, it took longer. I've also found that sometimes the AI just makes up things. So if you're asking students to give you the original quote, if you're asking them to give you the original citation, then they're less likely to cheat because it doesn't do them any good. It's easier if they just go and find the quote themselves rather than having ChatGPT write it out for them and then have to go back and find where it lines up with the quote. I also asked various AI programs to give me a list of studies that I needed for a research paper. So I just wanted to see if it could give me websites or scientific studies so that I wouldn't have to look it up myself. But here's what I did. I took the 10 studies that it gave me and I actually searched for those and I'm I'm a fairly good Googler, so if I don't find something on the first try, I know how to tweak it so that I can really 
find what it is that I'm looking for. And I would say that only about half of those sources actually existed. It's like it made up these articles or journals or studies. I don't know what it was, but I couldn't find at least half of them. So then I had to still go to like Google Scholar and find articles on my own, but it's not necessarily the most reliable thing. So if you have something like that, where the students have to prove to you that something exists or that they have to prove where they found something, it's gonna be a lot harder for them to cheat. So then I mentioned for writing assignments that they would have to cite sources, but this also works for something like science. So if they're doing a lab write-up, there's a good chance that you're having them apply something that they learned in the textbook. So what you could do is require them to cite sources from the textbook or cite information from the textbook to back up their claims. What this could look like in math is asking them to show their work and again, to be really metacognitive in terms of putting out their thought process of, okay, why did I do that next step? Why did I do that other step? And also properly labeling it. You could also incentivize them not cheating by allowing them to get full points if they do test corrections or if they go back and fix certain answers, but they have to like explain where their faulty thinking was and then they could still get full points or at least they could earn back some of the points that they lost. If students are struggling in your class, and they're doing poorly on the homework, and then they can go back and fix it by just telling you what it is that they got wrong, then they're less likely to cheat because you're letting them take risks and you're encouraging that learning process for them. Now, in extreme cases of cheating and math, something else that you could consider doing, which could seem like a little more work, is to do an oral exam. So you could give kids the types of questions that you're gonna ask them ahead of time, let's say like 10 to 20 questions. And then on the day of their oral exam, they pull out a question from a jar and that's the one that they're gonna have to work out in front of you. And again, be metacognitive and think out loud and their whole exam grade just kind of rides on that one question. I mean, even if you gave them the questions ahead of time, if they use AI to help them with that, they're not really gonna do so well in person on that exam. You can figure out who needs reteaching or some remediation, and then you can help them catch up later on. Now this next part will be a little bit controversial, but you can kind of take the wind out of your student sales by actually requiring them to use AI. I mean, if you can't beat them, join them. And what's great about this is that you can actually show them the limitations of AI so that they are less likely to depend on it. So for example, you could do a before and after assignment. So students have to write out their assignment, let's say in class, paper and pencil. You give them a prompt and they just have to write it out. And then they have to go in and type that into the AI and ask for feedback. All of the programs will give them feedback on their writing. And then they have to revise their writing based on that feedback. And I would add the additional step of having them highlight what it is that they fix. So if they fix sentence structure or grammar or whatever it is that they fix that ChatGPT told them to do, they have to actually highlight that. So again, yes, they could copy and paste it being rewritten in AI, but they have to take that extra step of going through it anyway to highlight where it was fixed. And of course, I would ask for screenshots of all of the steps to prove that they actually started out on their own, they went to ChatGPT, they read the feedback, and they revised it. Another fun assignment, maybe if you teach science or social studies, is to have them ask AI for information. Maybe you can give them certain questions that they're going to ask the AI, and then they have to fact check the answers that they get. That could really turn into a great conversation because they'll see that AI is wrong a lot of times. And like I did with that one class that I was taking, you can have them ask the AI for 10 sources for a research paper, just 10 sources for something in general. And then they could go and look up those sources and decide, okay, would those actually be something that I would use in my assignment or does it even exist? In math, you could give them a concept that they have never learned before and have them ask ChatGPT or BARD or any other AI to teach it to them. And then you could give them a quiz later on to see just how well the AI taught it to them. And then you could have a discussion about that, like 
How did it teach you how to solve this? What types of examples did it give you so that you could learn this concept? And then you could also then just teach your regular lesson, but it's a really good learning experience for them to see what the AI can and cannot do and that it's definitely not a replacement for you as a teacher or for them and their thinking as a student. To come up with these types of assignments where they have to use AI, I would think like a student in your class. What would compel them to cheat? What would compel them to use the AI in your class and then actually have them do that? So again, if I have a race paragraph, I would have my students ask the AI to write a race paragraph about a certain topic and then have a discussion with each other about just how good or bad that race paragraph was. Adding these requirements where they do have to use the AI, they're still learning along the way. They're learning during the process so that they can see what it is not only that the AI can do, but also they are validating the information that's coming out and they're still absorbing the concept or whatever it is that you want them to learn in that process. I've used it, like I said, for multiple choice questions and things like that. A lot of the answers were wrong and you might be telling me that my prompt isn't good or that I'm using it incorrectly, but if I'm using it incorrectly and I like to use AI, you can just imagine how your students are using it. And finally, I think it would be time well spent if you had an honest conversation with your students about how AI isn't going to replace them or their thinking. Now you wanna make sure that you have this conversation from more of a sympathetic place. I mean, people have been cheating on assignments forever. They've just gotten more sophisticated in their methods. I mean, I remember kids sitting outside of their lockers copying each other's work or hiding in the bathroom copying each other's work. And then when they had cell phone cameras, they were taking pictures and sending it to each other or they were taking screenshots on their iPads. I mean, the kids have just gotten really savvy in terms of how they cheat, but just remember, they've always cheated. So we don't want this to be a lecture about how they shouldn't cheat or use AI to cheat. That's not the point and then you're just gonna tune you out if you come at it from that angle. You need to know that students are willing to die on this hill in terms of using AI as a tool, and no matter how much you try to fight it, if they wanna use it, they're gonna use it. So let's try to come at it from a different way. Let's communicate to them that the students still need to learn the material, and it's really important for them, especially if they're gonna have a conversation with their peers in class about this. If they didn't learn the material, frankly, they're gonna look dumb. I mean, they know what it's like to be in a group and not know the material. They didn't do the work, and they're just sitting there while everyone else is frustrated with them. If they rely on the AI to always do their homework for them or their assignments, they're not going to learn. AI can't build a better body for us in a gym any more than it can build our brains. So our brains should be doing the heavy lifting and not the AI. The AI should absolutely be a tool that we could all use. The way that I like to use AI, honestly, is to use it as a launching point to give me ideas, to help me get unstuck to help me phrase something when it's coming out pretty ugly and clunky. And so I put down that ugly clunky sentence and it just kind of cleans it up for me. I feel like students should want their authentic voices to be heard and that what they present to you as a student should be the best that they have. It should be, this is the best that I can do, take it or leave it. I'm willing to improve it and make it better if you help me, but this is really what I know. I just feel like as students, as they're getting older, they have the right and the responsibility to make sure that we know who they are and that we know what they're capable of doing and not try to hide behind a robot. So something along those lines, when you're having this conversation with your students, because I've told my students how much I do like AI, I've written articles for them to analyze and read and answer questions and annotate with the help of AI and I'm really open about it. And so I think if you come from more of a, hey, this is a really cool tool, then I think you can help them see how using it to cheat is not gonna help them in the long run. Now, as promised, my bonus tip is to use a lockdown browser. Now your school or district will probably have to purchase this, but this is something that is being used by California when it gives its standardized testing every year. And basically it locks down the student's device, whether it's an iPad or if it's a tablet or if it's a computer, it locks it down so that they can't go to any other tab or window or app or program or anything. It literally locks them into that exam. So if you have a lot of cheating when it comes to online exams and kids are like using AI or just using study guides or whatever, then 
purchasing a lockdown browser is really going to help curb that. If you still haven't played with AI and you really want to, but you're not sure where to start, be sure to click on this video next because it's going to give you some ideas to get the most out of AI.